All right, guys, it's about time to get over to the shipper now. Uh, I'm a PC back over there because I, I was already there and PC it over to here. Um, see, I think my clock's going to run down still. I'm at 351 left on my 14 hour clock right now. Uh, let's see if it runs down some more. I'm, my main interest is, um, will I be able to get back to my house once I'm uh, done loading? Uh, I know my wife's wanting to know that answer. I'd kind of like to know myself, because uh, I'd rather do my 10 hour break at home than hang out down here. It's, uh, as long as there's some time on the clock where I can get it moving down the road, I can, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. I know for sure I'm not going to make it out of the state no matter what, though. So, uh, so ideally, I'll get home and do a 10 hour break there and then head out in the morning. Uh, but I am going to have a concern about whether I can get it there on time because uh, I don't know how late Clarksville will, will do. Uh, deliveries for produce. Usually produce loads always deliver in the mornings and usually kind of a cutoff time before they uh, uh, where they no longer will take those and you have to schedule for the next day or something. So oh, come on. Yeah, that'll work. Got a car coming but if I can get at least get around the curve and then get the car to go by so I can uh, I need to make this left turn on the center but I gotta wait on this car to go by first come on dude okay it looks like my clock is not counting down right now but I uh, so I think the three plus or three or so hour, whatever it was, break I took this morning over by, uh, no, just over on this side of Blythe. Uh, I think that now counts as where my clock ran down and then now that I'm on a longer than that break here, uh, now this is counting as the, what's stopping my 14 from moving because uh, I'm still at 351. Uh, so that's one of the, it's, again, that's one of the nice things about the new HOS rules. Uh, the, the old HOS rules, uh, I would have already been a pumpkin right now because, uh, yeah, I, like I said, I started my shift uh, about 0015 or so like that, somewhere on there, so 1415, which was almost an hour ago, would have been when my clock expired. But with the new HOS rules, and now I can stop my 14 hour clock with the, uh, at least a two hour break and uh, it really helps a lot in situations like this. Uh, I know like I'm trying to uh, not like I'm trying to be driving the entire day long but I mean hey I got a nap when I wanted one got to run some more miles and then now I'm running well uh, look like I'll be able to as long as I stay off duty which I, I can uh, take as long as is needed to get the load picked up and then just run it to my house and then call it a day and do my uh, do a 10 hour break or to probably even yeah I don't know I might even be able to do a shorter break like a like a seven hour quote unquote sleeper berth can't really long sleeper berths if I'm at home in my own uh, at my house but and then again I I mean the, the logging rules are, they've got issues, okay? Uh, I mean, how many times do I wake up uh, like about four or five hours into my break and I have to go pee? But hey, I can't leave sleeper birth because I have to do at least seven or eight hours of uninterrupted sleeper birth time. So, what do I do? I mean, I'm not sleeping. And 
then I, I can't technically leave sleeper birth. Uh, otherwise, I mean, because if you have to log what you do and do what you log, then that means if I get out of the truck to go uh, to the restroom and go pee, well, I, that, you're telling me I have to switch from sleeper birth to off duty. So there goes my uh, uninterrupted sleeper birth period, right? So. Uh, yeah, we don't have a perfect logging system. It needs more work. It's, you know, it's, it's improved. Uh, it's improved by leaps and bounds when uh, when they did the update in September. You know, the update of the rules in September, which I honestly did not expect that. Uh, I, when I first read about those HOS rule changes, I was like, that's it? It's like, well, what's the point of you guys even doing these rule changes at all if that's all you guys are going to do? But then once they implemented them, and I got a chance to, you know, play around with uh, how they work and all that, and even doing things legally, 100%, it's like, you know, these rules aren't so bad. It's uh, actually, uh, it's like leaps and bounds better than what we had before. Yeah, it still needs work, but... I think we got kind of a, kind of a situation where I think they need to reevaluate re what the real point of the rules is. Uh, I think it should be set up clear there. So I was I was expecting traffic here. Wow, I thought I was going to be sitting here waiting at that interchange, uh, this intersection for a while, but nope. Okay, so look at it like the. The federal travel regulation that, uh, yeah, that federal civilians and military personnel have to use. It's called a joint travel regulation for one of them, and then it's a joint federal travel regulation for the other. They're very similar uh, publications, but, and you guys can find this online. Uh, basically, the rules in there for travel, like when you're personally, uh, you know, I say driving your personal vehicle, uh, as we call POV personally owned vehicle um, or, or you know when you're doing something or even if you're at say uh, what you call doing a ditty move or do it yourself uh, move from one location to another which uh, some of you guys when you're at truck stops you might see somebody in a four-wheeler or you know, moving van or even just uh, like an SUV or whatever uh, not uncommon, you'll see them using a scale, like a cat scale at a truck stop, and you know, a lot of times it, it never fails to get online on Facebook groups and be like, what the hell is this idiot doing? It's like, uh, apparently you don't have any military experience, because uh, if, you, um, if you had any kind of military background at all, you'd probably know what a ditty move is and how that works. And you do a ditty move, uh, they explain even if you're in your, uh, let's say, uh, just your personal vehicle, whatever, they expect you to scale your vehicle, get a tear weight, basically, and then when you, uh, once you're load, you're fully loaded with all everything you're going to have with you that you're traveling with, they want you to scale again, so they know how much. Uh, because how much you get compensated depends on how much you get, uh, how much weight you're carrying, or you're trying, or you're you're moving on your own. And then you also have a mileage rate too. Uh, but I was still in. It was like I think 50 and a half cents a mile, somewhere on there. But is that 4083? Um, right, anyway. The travel rigs, as far as I, like, they're they're set up so they, it's like the. The agency cannot force the driver to do more than a certain number of miles per day. Uh, they're they're done uh, 350 miles per day, which is not D4029. He's been here longer than I have. They look like he had like five stars on his truck. Um, okay, but it doesn't specifically say that uh, the the member cannot drive more than 350 miles a day. It just means when the as far as how many days. Um, must the agency allow the driver, uh, the, the member to, to use to get from one location to another? Say like you're going from here in California to, uh, you park it on the curb or you, I don't know. What are you doing, dude? You're kind of hugging the curb like you're going to park, but 
now you're coming out like, okay, I don't, I don't want to pass because I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, yeah, it's, uh, the, I even argued with our people about that, my supervision about this, because I would always, I would regularly drive my personal vehicle on TDYs, yeah, just because it was fun. I've got a long line here. Wonderful. Okay. So I'll have to probably wait for a Walmart private fleet to move first, and then that's all right. We got time here anyway. All right, anyway, so going back to that. Uh, the travel reg says for every 350 miles, they have to give you a day of travel. So, let's say you're going from uh, here to Jacksonville. Uh, it's about 2,400 miles. Let me put up the, I'll just say 2,400 miles. So what they do is they just take 2,400, divide it by 350. Okay, that's 6.85. So, in other words, they'll give you about six or seven days uh, I think seven days to get from here to Jacksonville if you're relocating from you know whatever duty station you're at here to some duty station in the Jacksonville area uh, but now if you want to get there in two days or three days that's hey that's on you that's uh, I mean the, the travel wrecks don't specifically say that you have to take all six or seven days to get there uh, I mean and let, yeah, they just now, if you're if you're military, they say you can't drive more than eight hours a day. But all right, so if the speed limit's 70 miles an hour, that only takes you five hours to to cover 350 miles. So you still got three extra hours to work with. Uh, so, uh, and this is where I was arguing. I would argue with them about it. Like, it doesn't say that I can't drive 350 more than 350 miles in a day. Like, and I would drive like. Seven, six or seven hundred in my car as well and um, yeah I, was, I, I tell them it's I, I, you guys uh, only uh, have to give me so much time and uh, because the the cheapest you know the um, the most government advantageous means of travel is, as far as cost is by airplane or or whatever you know they can't force you to drive your personal vehicle on a TDY so they have to either go by uh, how much does it cost them to send you by commercial aircraft and then do you yeah, if you do uh, what's it cost to get a let's say uh, a taxi or something from wherever you whatever airport you're going to to the TDY location um, and then if you like got any if you need to get uh, if you're eating uh, basically what you call separate rats um, what's it uh, what's it cost to get you to and from your your TDY location to uh, food you know, food service places whatever whether it's a chow hall on base or that you have to pay your own way for or uh, to somewhere else and you know yeah, that all adds up so you find out what you know there's like a whole cost worksheet you have to do to figure out what the most uh, what the cheapest way is, whether it's uh, uh, paying, uh, I mean, buying uh, buying commercial tickets and getting, uh, looks like I might be able to turn in here now. Okay, yeah, again, either, uh, yeah, yeah, like ride, ride, uh, ride a cab or whatever, from uh, for everything you do, or is it cheaper to just uh, uh, go off PC briefly? No. Or is it cheaper to just uh, have you fly, but maybe get a rental car at your TDY location, and then uh, a lot of times I would take advantage of it because like I, I, I yeah. I could drive to stateside TDY locations in my personal vehicle, and then say running of you know basically uh, air you know, commercial airline tickets plus uh, rental vehicle is usually the cheapest way to go about it. Then 
So whatever that is, they're obligated to pay out. Uh, but now, are they going to pay it all to the airline and to the car rental place, or are they going to pay it to me? Because uh, that mileage rate I talked about, 50 and a half cents a mile now, if, uh, if the mileage rate puts them at like 14, uh, you know, like $1,400 when the airfare and uh, now, airfare and rental car route maybe would be like 850. This is uh, these are pretty close to the real numbers that I actually did have uh, on a TDY. Uh, then they're only going to pay out whatever the 850 is. It doesn't matter which mode you actually use, but that's the most they're going to pay. Um, so, are they going to pay the 850 to the airline and the rental agency, or are they going to pay the 850 to you? You know, even though the mileage rate would put you at 1400 so I'm like, oh, shit, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the, you know, drive my personal vehicle, because I enjoy getting out on the road, and it's kind of what led me to trucking, and also, uh, you know, and then that's, that money goes into my pocket instead of the airlines and car rental agency's pocket, and, it, you know, if it might only cost me, uh, Actually, I think it ended up costing like fourteen hundred total for airline tickets and rental uh, rental vehicle, and uh, okay with uh, no, and it would only cost me about you know I'd say like I did a TDY using my pickup from my house in San Jacinto, California to uh, uh, Dias Air Force Base in Abilene, Texas. Uh, I think the rental, uh, I, I think the total cost of gas to get to there and back was like 500 and some odd dollars and the trip I had calculated out to be uh, 1400 or so dollars in costs that they would have to pay for airline and rental car and stuff. So basically what it is, I ended up pocketing like eight or nine hundred dollars uh, because they were going to have to pay it anyway. And it only cost me 500 some odd dollars for gas, so you know the leftover was basically money going into my pocket, uh, which cool. Uh, but going back to the whole, uh, you know, 350 miles per day, like okay, you can do that. If, you're, if the trip is up to 400 miles, it'll give you one day to travel in. But anything over 400, the 400 miles, then the count, you know, then the the computation they do is divide it by uh, your mileage by 350 and then whatever that uh, number is round it up to the next nearest day and that's how many days they have to give you to complete your travel um, but like I say if, if you want to do it all in one day hey knock yourself out they can't force you to but if you want to do it that way and you, if you can do it safely there's nothing in the travel rigs, the joint travel rig, telling you you cannot do that. Um, they just can't force you to. Now, if, I think if trucking, if they did things, uh, the, you know, the FMCSA HOS rigs, if they did it kind of the same way, where, hey, they can't force you to take uh, to go any faster from shipper to receiver or whatever. But if you want to do, uh, if you want to go faster, go for it. But I mean, that, that's. Yeah, and drive when I feel like driving and park when I feel like parking. That should be um, that should be my call. Now, whatever works best for me. Like, I don't sleep eight hours. Some other people do. Just because uh, the core group of people uh, do sleep six to eight hours doesn't mean I have to or, you know, I should be forced to. And there are a lot of other, yeah, a lot of people in this industry who are going to agree with me, especially those of you guys who are uh, far more experienced truckers than me. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, I, I drive when I feel like driving and I sleep when I feel like sleeping. You now, why should I have to be forced to sit back there twiddling my thumbs when I could be driving and I feel fine to drive and want to drive, but hey, HOS rules. Yeah, so what do I do now? Uh, I'll make YouTube videos for you guys, I guess. Um, or pretend that I'm sleeping when I'm not and then get forced to yeah, to drive, and then like, oh, I, well, now I'm too tired to drive, so, uh, like last night, I drove from Tolleson to a little bit west of uh, 
flight that was only like 160 miles. I don't know why I didn't sleep so. I mean, why, why I even was getting tired because uh, I, I thought I slept okay in Tolleson, not a, not a huge amount. But uh, yeah, it. I felt like I slept okay though, enough where I should have been able to drive at least like half my ship before I was, yeah, at least all the way out to San Bernardino before I was gonna necessarily want to stop and get some sleep. Uh, it didn't quite work out that way, and probably ended up being good because had I gotten to the yard early, uh, there would have been a better chance I would have wanted to go up to my house and wait for either wait for a delivery time or for something to have or some kind of information, but. Since uh, 6 a.m. Pacific time is when our uh, our people at the yard show up uh, are at the in Sepulpa, basically 8 a.m. Central. Uh, it means no planners there until late, no DMs there until late. So I'm not going to get any info, updated instructions on whether to hey go ahead and deliver the load or go ahead and drop it or we got to swap or something or you know none of that info is going to come in until at least 8 a.m. So it was probably a good thing that I didn't, uh, I wasn't in a position to go by the drop yard until after eight o'clock anyway, because, you know, like I said, I, I think it worked out better as far as getting the load dropped and not running needless miles to my house and back down the hill, whatever, you know, finding out that, yeah, you can go ahead and drop the load, which I ended up doing. Um, yeah, needless to say, the, uh, the new HOS rules are way better than what they used to be, but they still need work. One five two five five four five eight. Can I use the last four? Five four five eight. Five four five eight. What's the destination? Clarksville. Alright, I'll get back to you. So you're good. Go ahead and park in the J lot, go to two fifteen. Doctor, they'll give you I go to two fifteen, they'll give you the doctor. Thanks. Have a good one. Uh, I'll check in here. Now I'm going to go over to the. He wants me to park it in J Row, which is the very last one uh, up against the fence. Usually that row is for loaded trailers. Kind of odd. He wants me to park it in that row and not E or F. Sounds like my trailer is going to be in one of the dock doors still. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, I had a whole video compiled and ready to post to YouTube of uh, 
me showing up at the Tolleson drop yard yesterday and then going from there over to uh, the pilot truck stop in Avondale and then after I extracted a couple of uh, truck backing videos out of it I accidentally deleted the, the the source file which was the one I wanted to put on YouTube for the, heck, the whole what's going on with me kind of stuff and, so there's a whole bunch of stuff there, unfortunately. Uh, who do we have here? 3935. And got Delta 3297 in the dock door, if I saw him earlier today. Uh, there's a JCT over here in door 161. Looks pretty. F I think it's full. Might be one spot open over there. I think this Sea uh, or England might be wanting uh, wanting to scale this load. No, oh, I might have to put it over here. Yeah, Sea or England's coming this way. So if I do back in one of these spots over here, which I think I might put it next to that 579 up there. Looks like there's two spots open right there. Make sure I let C or England go by first. Yeah, definitely room there. JCT trailer sitting here. I tell you, this is JCT Central here. Might as well call this our home terminal here. Or our West Coast terminal, whatever. Alright, what do we yeah, prime? What are we doing? I don't want to play guessing games. I guess you're going that way, so good. I can come over here. Go around your ass so I don't have to keep waiting and playing, you know, trying to figure out what the hell you're doing. I'm 
certain my trailer is going to be an adopt door still. Ah, nobody coming, no pedestrians, no other trucks. The L3877, I've seen that guy. Hey, rats. I'm going to sneak by you real quick, dude. Come on, let me go by you. back up so I'm a little bit tighter with this guy. phone number on here just in case because I'm pretty sure they're going to need it. I'd be surprised if my load's ready to go because I already called them earlier to confirm whether it's a dropping hook or live and they said dropping hook but it's not in the door yet. That was a few hours ago. Alright so this trailer is still not in a door yet so I'm just gonna go ahead and GC bobtail over to come on at least get out of the way here so other people can use this spot to check in or whatever and I'll park over there by where the yard mills are at So this is going to be a lengthy wait because the load's not even in the door. The trailer's not even in the door yet. It means it's probably going to be at least a few more hours before, uh, before I'm ready to leave here. Um, it's about 15.50 local time, so I'm going to be around 1900 or at least, if not later, uh, by the time I get out of here. So, yeah, fun, fun. Alright, so I'll have some more footage for you whenever I can get, you know, whenever it's time to move in front of my trailer or get out of here or something. So, keep watching for more. Alright guys, the trailer is finally in the dock door. It's going to go uh, back in, uh, to uh, park in front of it now. It's in door 157, which is on the other side of the building.
157 is going to be over here pretty close by. I think right here, probably by this red, uh, the Sierra England truck. Yeah, no, it's not even there. here and wait then. It's either not in the dock door yet or the monster already pulled it out. Hey guys, uh, I, just, I was just talking to some of my friends here. The team, uh, the team here that I'm from, uh, that I talk to frequently, uh, they're named Brian and Tammy. Uh, they've been here uh, with JCT about as long as I have. And then uh, another guy I know from our Facebook group, uh, he's two doors over from Brian and Tammy. Uh, I just met up with him finally in person, and, but he, he's going to the same place as me, Clarksville. And he says, uh, I think he just got he, he just got some kind of suggestion that his load's getting canceled. So uh, I'm gonna go and my trailer was supposed to be in the dock door an hour and a half ago. It never showed up, so I'm gonna go check with shipping office and find out what's going on. Honestly, I don't really care if it cancels because then, then I don't. Then there's less burden to try to get the load delivered on time. Uh, and I can just bobtail it straight, or uh, it's not bobtail. I don't know. I might have to grab. I'll have to ask about what, what to do. Take my trailer back out with me, or bobtail out, or what? But uh, oh, there's Elmer right here. Cancel you or not you? Not going to? He knows that I'm here. I was like, don't cut across my nose. I don't, I don't know if he knew that I was there, but he was checking his mirror, obviously, so good. Oh, she said I just got a just had a trailer assigned to the door at 541. Yeah, come on. What's that? Act up. I'm just going to back it up here. Yeah, and then uh, Elmer, the, one of the, guy, uh, the other guy I was talking to, Sound like his load was gonna cancel, and he's going to the same place I'm going. So, like, I don't know what the hell's going on now. It's frustrating, especially when I got woken up for all this. To have to wait an hour and a half for nothing to happen. Oh. 
Try to get some sleep, I guess. I don't really care if the... I mean, I don't care if the spotter pulls the trailer out of the door or if I do at this point. This maybe get whatever rest I can. Kind of love the shenanigans here, though. Alright, so... <laughs> I'll have some more coverage for you guys uh, at some point in time here. Alright guys, so I just got a call again saying back in the door 157, I'm like... Wait a minute. This is supposed to be a dropping hook. I was sat there for an hour and a half waiting for a hostler to bring a trailer in and... Now I'm getting the impression that the expectation was for me to bring the trailer... You know, back the trailer into the door that I came with. You have I asked her, I asked the lady uh, in there, uh, what? Attention, a new important message has arrived. What, just curious, what trailer is assigned to my door? And she says 7059. I'm like, that's the same trailer I brought in the yard with me. And, and I told her the guard shack guy told me to drop it into door in uh, row 7. So I'm like, I'm confused here. And then now I'm thinking that... The only reason I'm not getting loaded yet is because they're expecting me to drop the trailer, I put the trailer in the door when I'm expecting a yard jockey to do it. So I don't really care how long it takes. It can take six, eight hours. I don't give a shit. Detention pay, but come on, don't leave me hanging and crap. You know, and I find out there's some expectation that I'm supposed to drop the trailer there, and, you know, when I was expecting it to be a dropping hook, and I get a call an hour and a half ago, and thinking that the yard jockey's going to bring it, and it never does show up. Come on, dude. Burning PC time watching you. Big old boy there. And then my clutch wants to act up again. Yeah, and the other lady in there said it's, uh, I mean, someone's, I mean, that they're working on it now, so I'm like, is, are we sure there's a trailer in the door? Because, uh, especially when it's a trailer that I brought into the yard with me, uh, and I sat there for an hour and a half waiting for apparently nothing, I, yeah, because the way the guy told me just now, back into door 157, makes me think there's not even a trailer in that, that I'm supposed to hook up to it. trader in there but we'll, I mean for, let's humor ourselves let's take a look yeah I look like it might actually be there now oh, I think I overshot it I'm looking in the targeted on the wrong spot trailer in there at all.
Alright, and I'm gonna make sure I get all this info on the Qualcomm. Because I have even a call record, and I know I talked to somebody who told me it was gonna be a dropping hook earlier today. Anybody's coming. 
rotate a little bit more over get the trailer pointed a little bit heavier that way get it out in front of this spot and then I'll come in hard and I can start rotating so A nasty gram. Let them know what's all going on here. All right, guys. We're uh, finally we're done loading. Finally, it's uh, just after 9:30 p.m. I pull out of the door, get the load locks put in, and close the doors, scale it, and then go to the other side of the building and wait. concern is it being too tail heavy. Uh, I think it'll be alright based on where the uh, where the last pallets are at. Basically spent enough time here in the area to get a full 10 hour break in without even 
really meaning to. It's now I could have cheated. Uh, I could have done a yard move while I was in here, but I didn't want my 14-hour clock running down on me when I was originally hoping to, you know, end my day at my house. But that's yeah, that's not going to happen anymore. It is what it is. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna have a chance at on-time delivery if I do shut down at the house. So I'm gonna at least try to get it into Arizona tonight. Don't have to get too far, but I'm 1,525 miles out. So if I can at least get into Arizona, and yeah, maybe at least to Kingman, if uh, yeah, I, I, or maybe even Seligman. Uh, yeah, actually, at least to Kingman. Um, be in good shape to, uh, to get to Clarksville in two more shifts and and have no problems getting there on time. Alright now, check our weights. 11 to 40. God, can this freaking clutch pedal give me a break for once? pressure on it that I want. Forty thousand eight hundred, that's not even thirty thousand pounds. Okay, so I'm actually gonna be looking for seventy four eight or less. I don't think it's gonna be that heavy. Well I don't know could as uh the load assignment said 40,000 pounds, so it could very well be that heavy. No, it's not that bad. It's it's not 40,000. It's like about 36,000. 35 or 36 load. 70,640. Well, I'm about 30,000 per axle. Or per axle group, whatever. That's definitely well within limits. Sleeper berth while we wait. And I don't know, see how 
how long this takes. Hopefully not too long. I want to get some kind of miles ran before I go to sleep. All right, it didn't take long at all to get the call that the bills are ready. I'm gonna just write down my seal number. Actually, everything, weight, quantity, and seal. 35189, that's right in the area of what I expected it to be. Quantity. So I got 24 uh, pallets. And then seal number. So I'm going to go ahead and send my departure info right now. Yeah, and so I, that way when I get through sealing up, I can just go straight out, uh, straight out the gate and leave. All right, we're ready to roll. And I don't plan on running a full shift. I just want to at least get uh, perhaps Kingman and I'll be happy. Yeah, this clutch pedal still. Uh, let's see what Stevens is doing because they just got out of their truck there. Right. Oh, they're getting ready to close their doors. a couple of lights but I think they're further down. Alright, we can use both sides of this uh, gate here. get up the road uh, just get on to I-10 and we'll end the video there and uh, come on this fucking brake uh, this clutch brake acting up again I'm gonna have to use first gear it's just too it's, it's too sensitive and I barely even push, I let the clutch out even the least bit and it's already uh, uh, trying to grab. You have 7 hours and 58 minutes of remaining drive time. Alright, so it's uh, about 1,530 miles from here to Clarksville. Uh, it should take just a little bit less than two days to get there. Uh, I don't know who that guy is there. I don't really recognize him. Why is this guy backing into the driveway? in there you can wait <laughs> and a 
nobody got time for that. I don't want to get my load moving. Nah, so I'm gonna probably stop at Barstow, get myself a drink. I, I seriously need a drink, or uh, maybe even like a snack or something. They've, uh, not eaten anything since earlier when I stopped at Zorba's. Which wasn't that long ago for you guys, but for me it was uh, about 12 hours, yeah, 11, 12 hours ago. Come on, give me my, give me my clutch response back. So I have no rhyme or reason of when it acts up and when it acts normal. that I usually do, come over, come east on Awamanza, and then north on Rancho Avenue, and get on I-10 east there at Rancho. About, I started to talk about that the other day, but never actually finished. I have four trip meters, A, B, C, and D. And I don't really use D, but I use A, B, and C for different purposes. So A is my loaded uh, miles meter. So when I leave the shippers, when I usually reset trip A, which I just did, trip B is basically my shift meter so at the beginning of each shift I reset trip B and that way I know how many miles I've logged uh, for that particular shift and kind of gives me an idea how many more miles to plan on going before I shut down for either a 30 minute break or a 10 hour break or whatever the case might be. It's certain I don't get tired and want to take a nap somewhere along the way. Um, and then my C meter I actually synchronize that to the mile markers themselves on the interstate. So, and I, it's always like a, a one of the mile markers that ends with zero. Preferably uh, mile marker zero, mile marker hundred, whatever, or fifty or hundred, whatever. Because um, my my trip meter is not calibrated perfectly to the mile markers. And sometimes mile markers are real lines where they're not exactly a mile mar a mile apart anyway. So what I, yeah, and, and, and the reason I want to do that is because sometimes you're not able to see the mile markers. <coughs> Cough, California. Um, another one is maybe the maybe a mile post is missing, or maybe it's there but you just can't read it because it's uh, covered up with snow or mud. That happens a lot during the winter months. And oh. I'd stay back a little bit. There's another truck coming. He's got a green. I'm going to let him have the turn first. Yeah, it's... Good, good attention to detail there. Look over to the left and I see a, a truck coming. Never mind that it's a swift truck, but uh, I knew, and I saw his turn signal on, so I knew he was going to turn here. I know he, it's. I know how hard that turn is to make, so yeah, give him space. Uh, that's like so much slop in my clutch pedal right now. Just 
slow the gears for now. Okay, so this load is tentatively scheduled for the, I want to say the 11th. No time set on it yet, and that's normal for these pickups. They don't want to schedule until they know for sure when you, uh, when the driver can actually get there first, and then they try to give an appointment time that works with that. Ten right here. Yes, wind our video once I'm on the interstate. All right, these guys are getting ready to get a green arrow here, so I'm gonna wait on them. Damn it! Fucking clutch. I felt it starting to grab, I had to get it out of gear ASAP so it wouldn't... Video longer as well. So, you guys all have a good night, and we'll see you next time.